This one is gonna be difficult. In today's video, I wanna tell you guys what are some of the most expensive items that I don't regret having in my reloading room. So without further ado, moon <laughs> boot. Well, <laughs> my foot's obviously feeling much better. Let's go. Okay, now why on earth, Pete, would you show us a video where you show off the most expensive stuff you have? And the answer to that is quite simple. Because this is the first video in a new series that I'm making. The next version of this video, I'll show you guys the most budget-friendly reloading tools that make the biggest difference. But in today's video, we're going to start things off by looking at some of the most spendy things. And I think that's something that this hobby of ours is very good at. It is sucking the life out of your bank account. Now, for me, for the longest time, and it's probably still like that, is that, you know, it's, there's always that next thing and that never goes away. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> at least for me, it hasn't. Anyway, so without further ado, in no particular order, we're gonna start things off with my AMD FX120i Auto Trickler. Now, the Auto Trickler is basically a scale that dumps your initial batch of powder. Let's say I wanted to load 44 grains of powder. I'll set it up on a little screw where it can dump the initial load of powder into the cup essentially and then it will auto trickle the last you know couple of grains and it is phenomenally fast and it's phenomenally accurate. Now the reason I got the AND auto trickler I started with version 2. I've since then bought the upgrade kit. I'm on version 3. Game changer. If you guys want me to do a dedicated video on the auto trickler, I'll absolutely do that for you guys. I know there's a new version coming out, but that one is plenty capable for what I need to use it for. And then it essentially trickles that last bit of powder. And the reason I got that is for two specific reasons. Number one is time. I spent the longest time reloading for precision rifle matches where you know you need to load 200 rounds. For a multi-day match, you probably want to take a little bit more depending on the round count, at least back in the day when I started shooting here in South Africa. We had very big round counts for the weekend. So, you know, using the current scale that I had at the time, it just took a very, very long time to load a large amount of ammo. So that was that. The other thing I wanted to eliminate essentially is variability in powder charges. So I wanted to know that if I shot over a target, that it wasn't as a result of, you know, an inconsistent powder flow. And that really does it for me because it's giving me accuracy to basically the kernel of powder, which is incredible. I mean, if you've ever seen one of those, just by blowing on it like super softly, you see the little numbers run on the scale. It really is impressive. Now, number two is going to be our AMP annealing made perfect machine absolute game changer. Now, annealing is basically the process of resetting the hardness of your neck because every time you fire a case or you size a case, the neck hardens the physical molecular structure of the brass changes where it's hard and then they might lead to cracking and inconsistencies down the line. Now, there's many ways you can anneal your brass, but again, long range shooting, we need consistency and the annealing made perfect machine is incredibly consistent. Now, I started off with a handheld drill and I had a little pilot for every case and that would spin the case around and I would have a gas thing that I would try and hold on the exact spot and then count one, two, three. <laughs> and then that was how I did it. Then initially I got sort of an automated gas one where you could set it and it was more consistent. But the problem is with the gas annealing, at least for me in my experience, and I know other people are in the same boat, is that as that bottle loses volume and it starts cooling down, you can physically see the little flame get smaller and smaller. And that over, you know, two, three hundred pieces leads to inconsistencies. So I decided to get the annealing made perfect machine and the guys from AMP were kind enough to send one out to me. And it has been a staple in my reloading process ever since because I know again, eliminating a variable completely. I'd love to get the sort of automated case feeder because sitting here annealing, you know, 800 pieces of 223, it takes a while. So that would be a nice little upgrade that I could bring to that machine. Number three is a two for one. And it's basically my extreme tumbler. So I stainless steel tumble. That means that I put all my brass in here and I put stainless steel media in with a bit of let me shine. I've done a video as to how I 
specifically use this machine and my concoction that I'll try and remember to link up there to get super, super clean bras. So, Extreme Tumbler is what I use. There's many different ones. And then something that I didn't have for the longest time is this, which is basically a glorified food hydrator that is a Frankfurt Arsenal brass dryer. And essentially the problem with wet tumbling is your brass is wet and wet and gunpowder and primers don't go well together. So you need to get your brass completely dry. Now in the past, what I would do, I would literally put them in my wife's oven and heat them up, which is probably not the best thing to do, but I never told her about this. So, and she hasn't watched a video in like three years that I make, so we're safe on that one. But the food dehydrator just does that really quickly. I leave it on overnight. Next morning, my brass is ready to go. And it basically speeds up that turnaround. You know, if I had a match this weekend and I want to head hunting and shoot the same rifle, I can turn that around pretty quickly. Or if you forget to load for a match and all of a sudden it's Thursday and you need to load ammo by Friday evening, that helps you if you have wet tumbling built into your process. The wet tumbling I found gives me very clean brass and it resets the brass almost to that sort of factory cleansiness. And then I have just consistency throughout my process. Now these two are not the most expensive pieces of kit to add to your sort of arsenal, but they do make a big difference in terms of sort of the efficiency of getting brass clean and getting the dry again to go into your next step. Number four is the Henderson trimmer. Now you would have seen this featured heavily on the channel lately because it is a new addition. I absolutely love it. When you're working with large amounts of brass, you know, large is all relative depending on how much time you have. You know, if you're retired, working 800 pieces of brass is a nice thing to do for a week, but I'm not. So I need efficiency. And the problem for me, and this is a problem for a lot of people, my biggest challenge was trimming my brass, then running them through the RCBS case prep station to chamfer and deburr and, you know, clean the necks out. It took an incredible amount of time. Also, the way I was trimming was with sort of a Sudami trimmer, which is, I think the, there was a product similar called the world's best trimmer. It basically goes into a drill and then you're running every case in there, but you have to push pretty hard to make sure you get consistency. Your hands get all tired and sore from working 800 pieces. And it was such a pain in the bum that I eventually stopped doing it. And I would only do it every third or fourth firing. And what that leads to is brass growing longer over time. Sometimes you'll see, you know, guys struggling to close their bolt because the brass is a little bit long and you're actually pushing the, you know, the side next to the bullet and the case, you're pushing that neck into the steel of your barrel. And that's why you're having sometimes those sticky closures. And also inconsistency, if you're not doing it every single time, then what's the point of trying to eliminate all these other variables, but you're not trimming your brass back and having the same starting point every single time. So that tool has been an absolute game changer. Now, great news for the guys in South Africa. And a bunch of you have asked me, Pete, where can we buy these? We have them coming and they'll be on the Impact Pro Shop pretty soon. Now, before we get to the last one, which is the biggest one, I want to thank MDT for sponsoring today's episode. Modular Driven Technologies offer incredible selection of chassis systems. They've got amazing customer service. And if you're looking to breathe some new life into your rifle, you want to, you know, have a look at starting the competition scene. You maybe want to, you know, just kit out your rifle a little bit more, make it a bit more tactical, a little bit more practical, some modularity built into it head on over to mdttech.com. They'll take care of you. And if you have any questions, reach out to their customer service team or leave a comment down here. Me or one of my lovely viewers might be able to assist you. Right, so last but not least, you can't actually see it in the shot because it's slightly out of frame. It is none other than this, the Area 419 Zero Press. Bringing the Zero Press into my reloading system was a game changer. It was sort of the cherry on the cake, if you will. Now. Area 419 did provide that press for us, but they've never paid for a video or said, hey Pete, say positive things about our press. Anybody that's ever seen one of these will tell you, it's, <laughs> it's, it's badass, it's super cool. One of the biggest things for me with that was, you know, it's a turret press, so I can leave dies set up for various calibers and have multiple heads for it and literally just undo it, click over to the die I wanna be using and I'm immediately off to the races. And that saves time over, you know, loading the um, large amount of different calibers that I do have. I started life off with an RCB, no, I started life off with a Reading Big Boss 2 press that you guys would have seen heavily used on the channel. And that press had quite a bit of slop in the sort of handle as you were, you know, seating bullets and doing those kind of things. And for long range consistency, that's not ideal. 
but I won many matches with that press too. So the takeaway here for me on the press specifically is make sure you're buying a good press. And if you can, try and buy a turret press because it is quite handy to have dice set up. And that for me has been the biggest awesome thing with the zero press is the fact that I can just have my dice set up. And because most of my brass I've knife now fired, you know, two, three times already, I'm not setting up that um, sort of shoulder bump die every single time anymore. I've kind of left it where it is because I'm fully fire formed at this point in time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Top five most expensive things that I really take value of in my reloading room. In the next video in this series, I'm gonna give you guys the five budget friendly things that I implemented into my reloading process that made the biggest difference. That one's gonna be fun, so if you don't wanna miss out on that, make sure you are subscribed, leave the notifications turned on, make sure you tick that little bell. We have noticed a lot of you saying our videos aren't coming up in your feed because the algorithm obviously with us doing this is not great. So make sure you're sharing these videos with your friends and that you have that notification bell on so you do not miss a single video. Thank you guys very much. It's been wonderful chatting to you again in your living room on your phone while you're pooping. I don't know what you're doing. If you're still pooping, you gotta go see a doctor. Goodbye.